Hello, get to show you something pretty cool today, the TerraSpace All command. So TerraSpace All is going to allow you to deploy multiple stacks or all of your infrastructure in a single command. And the way it works is essentially it calculates your dependencies and then it sequences the deploy for you. Before we jump into the command, let's actually take a look at some Terraform recommendations. This link takes us to the official Terraform docs. And here it says uh, it recommends basically one workspace per environment per Terraform configuration. Uh, what that means is kind of here's an example. The billing app or configuration should be scoped to dev and stage and prod, so different environments. And the network comfort configuration can be scoped to like a dev, stage, and prod also. So uh, HashiCorp and Terraform kind of recommends you should design your workspaces or your projects to be structured where you have your application and your environment kind of scoped and combined in one scope together. Okay. So uh, I took that and I actually summarized it and provide uh, some different contexts too. Here's the Terraform Cloud context. So a scope here, remember, is a configuration and an environment combined. And that's kind of uh, done by a workspace. Uh, if you're not used to uh, Terraform Cloud, but you're using Terraform Open Source, uh, the scope is essentially a, a separate Terraform module with a separate state file because a workspace uh, manages a separate state file. In the context of TerraSpace, this is essentially a stack. And a stack is just a, a, a module, because everything in Terraform is a module. Uh, so hopefully this table helps. Uh, is a workspace here, is a module with a separate state file here, and the stack here. Yeah. So I believe the reasons why Terraform recommends these overall strategies is because of this link right here. <laughs> Terrasp Terraform takes a very long time to run. So there's like kind of a, a issue there where people are kind of uh, saying, hey, why is Terraform apply taking so long? I have to wait 20 minutes for it to start. Sometimes even longer, sometimes 30 minutes. Um, so uh, the way it has to do with the way Terraform works. Terraform, the way it works is there's a state file and then Terraform is going to try to reconcile what's in your state file with what's actually on your cloud. So pretend your estate file has an instance and your cloud doesn't have that EC2 instance yet. So when you run Terraform apply, Terraform is going to reconcile that. It's going to say, hey, there's no instance on the, provider, on the cloud yet, so I'm going to go create an instance. Let's say you do have an instance and there's an instance in your estate file too, but uh, the attributes are slightly different. Let's say the instance type is different. Terraform is going to try to reconcile that and basically change the instance type. So that's how Terraform works for one instance. But let's say you have like a monolithic like project or like a huge state file. Uh, let's say you have like 100 instances in there. So Terraform is going to now try to reconcile 100 instances. So it's going to go out there and like make the API calls to describe 100 instances. So that's going to be slow. It's just going to be slow. And Terraform actually does a lot of parallelization. So it actually might even spin up your CPU, churning through and trying to <laughs> reconcile everything at once there. Um, so. Uh, so that's why I think they recommend uh, not to have a monolithic structure uh, because it's just going to be slow to apply that. All right, so that's reason number one. Uh, number two is it's safer to update because your changes are going to be limited in scope. Uh, the blast radius is essentially reduced. So what I mean by that is let's say you have everything like a VPC, a database, and a, a, and an instance all in one project, one state file, and you only want to make a change to the instance. Uh, in the back of your mind, you're always going to be wondering, uh, am I going to affect the database? Am I going to accidentally delete the VPC? You know, like, you know, there is a Terraform pl a plan and everything, so you kind of know by that, right? But like, the state file is coupled, right? So because of that, you just never know. There's no kind of, uh, there's no degrees of separation there. Um, so it's kind of uh, nice to have it in separate uh, kind of uh, state files there. That way, uh, you can kind of know, like, there's no way if I apply this instance, there's no way I can affect the database or the VPC. That's actually a really nice uh, guardrail to have. Uh, number three, it decouples the code into kind of logical uh, uh, reusable units and definitely encourages the behavior. So that's just kind of uh, another point, I, I think. So I think those are the reasons why Terraform and HashiCorp kind of officially recommends kind of taking the strategy. Now, here comes the problem. <laughs> so by listening to their official docs, <laughs> uh, we introduce the problem. The problem we introduce is we lose something very valuable that Terraform does, orchestration for us. So orchestration uh, is basically what Terraform does. And I, I believe what 
um, this is why a lot of people kind of just jam everything into kind of one project, one module, one state file, is because uh, we have a significant advantage from Terraform. It handles orchestration for us. It handles the parallelization, it handles the sequencing, it handles the retry logic. You know, that stuff's hard to do. So uh, that's why I think people still kind of shove everything into kind of one module because uh, they won't, they won't lose that really valuable benefit that Terraform provides. So very ironically, by listening to Terraform's recommendations, you end up with a problem. <laughs> uh, so that's not great. Uh, so uh, TerraSpace All tries to solve this problem. And the way it does this is it basically calculates the dependency graph and then deploys the, the stacks and sequences everything in the proper order for you. Uh, and it also paralyzes everything as much as it can. So it essentially, it handles orchestration, okay? Here's the dependency graph. Uh, here, the graph is showing that A1 is dependent on B1, B2, and B3. And then B3 in turn is dependent on C2 and C3. Finally, C2 is dependent on D1. So that's a pretty long chain of dependencies here in this picture. Uh, here is an example of TerraSpace all up. So when you run TerraSpace all up, what happens is TerraSpace is going to prompt you. <laughs> it's going to let you know what it's going to do before it does it. Uh, so that's pretty nice. And you can see what's prompting us for here is saying B2, C1, C3, and D1 are going to be applied first in the first batch in parallel. Uh, and we can look at the graph here. B2 is here, C1, then C3, and then B D1. So as you can see, those are the leaf nodes. So TerraSpace is going to do basically apply, starting on the leaf nodes, and it's going to go up the graph. Okay. Uh, and then eventually it's going to end up on A1, which is the very top here. But it's not going to reach there until B1, B2, and B3 have all been reconciled. They have all been applied. So it's going to wait and kind of sequence it properly there. Uh, so once you confirm and click uh, Y enter, then it is a TerraSpace is going to give you a summarized output. So um, it doesn't kind of show you all those logs because and I did it this way because um, I thought it would be better to not like have a kind of all the logs all put it out in the standard out and then just interlace uh, in a big gigantic stream. Uh, instead, it kind of actually summarizes uh, what it's doing for you so then you can actually make some sense of it. But it does write all the details uh, into a separate log file for each of these individual commands. And uh, so you can always go in there and kind of debug that. And there's also a very handy log command, which I kind of, I'll show you in the demo, um, that actually is gonna stream all the logs too if you kind of still want that, okay? So uh, how do you configure dependencies? So that's an important question. Uh, so the way you configure dependencies with TerraSpace is you simply wire the outputs to the input variables, okay? So here is an example of an instance stack that's dependent on the VPC stack, okay? So we wanna know where to deploy this instance to and we wanna deploy it to this VPC, okay? Uh, so on this VPC, it has a VPC output and then the instance uh, has a variable uh, here input and to wire them together we use tfr files so tfr files there's basically output and then and here's this magical helper basically output is what does it uh and then you specify an output vpc which is the stack right here the dependent stack and then the output name which is vpc and then you assign it to the uh input variable here vpc because it belongs to instance here and then here's the declaration of the uh variable so this one line is enough for TerraSpace to infer the dependency, actually. That's it. Um, so uh, there's also another way to uh, wire dependencies with a depends on helper. So let's say if you do have two stacks that you need to, uh, that are dependent on each other, that um, uh, you wanna wire together without actually explicitly wiring uh, inputs and outputs, you can just use depends on, right? But I kinda like the way kind of output works because if you remove all this wiring, then dependency magically goes away also. You don't, you don't have to remember to wire that dependency, right? But you can use the depends on too, if you have like a case where you don't have, actually have inputs where you have to be wired to, uh, from outputs. Uh, and you can use both if you want to too. Okay, so visualizing with graphs. So this is pretty cool. Um, this graph that I've been showing you was actually generated by this TerraSpace all graph command. This command builds this, uh, this diagram. Um, and this is, uh, uh, this is really, really cool, uh, subgraphs and subtrees. So you could deploy all your infrastructure you want, um, and you graph out all your infrastructure you want, or you could actually target subgraphs. And the way you do that is you should actually just specify the stack names right afterwards, okay? So here we're kind of targeting B1 and B3, and you can see in this, um, this uh, generated diagram right here, 
that B1 and B3 and its subgraph is actually going to be the thing that's going to be applied. And the blue nodes are not going to be applied. So we can see that uh, when we look at tear space all up B1, B2 here, A1 and B2, uh, that is not being applied. That's not in this list of this uh, preview right here. Uh, all the other nodes are being applied because we filter them out. We're only targeting basically B1 and B3 nodes there. Okay. So uh, the last command is tearing it all down. So tear space all down uh, destroys everything. So obviously a very powerful command, be very careful with it. Uh, probably never run with the dash Y. Dash Y is gonna bypass the prompt. Are you sure prompt? Um, so be careful because then you're gonna destroy all your infrastructure. <laughs> uh, uh, and then it also, it's gonna do it in reverse order, okay? So it's gonna destroy everything in reverse order. Okay, so here are some links to some more documentation of the all subcommands here. You can just kind of go to it and then you click on use commands here and then uh, it's going to give you the CLI reference command with some examples here. Uh, here's a link to the kind of the, uh, deploy all intro docs, which is essentially what we're covering in this blog post here. And then here's another link to some more documentation. Uh, deploy multiple covers TFRs a little bit, you know, a little more detail. Uh, TerraSpace all, I just showed you that. That's the CLI reference. And then here's a link to a, uh, a repo with a, a, essentially a demo that we're going to kind of go through. Okay. So let's go and jump through that demo. I've cloned it down already, so I'm, I'm kind of set. I wanted to show you kind of some of the project structure here before um, you know, uh, running uh, TerraSpace all up. But uh, here's all the stacks, like A1 all the way to E1 here. Uh, so there's a lot of different kind of um, example kind of stacks here just to show you how uh, TerraSpace all works. And here's main.tf. So in main.tf, we're just creating a, a ran two random pets. So random pet is just a good test resource sometimes. Um, and it, it requires here a variable here. So let's go look, let's take a look at the variable definitions here. So there's the variable definition, length one, length two, right? Uh, and then we still haven't looked at the wiring yet. We haven't looked at dependencies. How does that work? That's in TFRs. So let's look at TFRs right here. Okay, so that's everything. Uh, here's the uh, resource definitions. Here are the variable definitions. And here is where we establish the dependencies with this output helper. So it's saying here, Output, we're going to grab the output from B1 stack and we're going to grab its length output and then we're going to assign it to length one variable input right here. And that goes to here and that goes to here. Okay. So I just want to show you that. Okay. So now that that's done, let's actually just uh, run TerraSpace all graph. So we're going to actually generate some graphs here. So we can see visually uh, how it all works. So it's actually just calculating the dependencies right now and it's going to pop up a graph. Okay. We'll kind of move this one over here. So you can see this is the full graph. Um, and it matches with the readme right here, okay? So uh, that is the full graph, but let's actually uh, play with uh, subgraphs too. So let's do A1 and B2, let's just look at that thing. So we're gonna we're expecting to see B2 and A2, and we're expecting to see that uh, A1, B1, C1 are, 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 or actually this is dependent right here. So, so as you can see, B2 and A2 are not highlighted, but the blue nodes uh, are, are not, so those are not gonna be applied. And we'll just do one more, one, one more, example, uh, a simpler one with this B1. So now we only expect B1 and C1 to actually be a highlight in green here. So there, B1 and C1. So that's how it works, okay? Uh, so the graph command is pretty useful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go um, tear space all um, up. So we're going to go ahead and start applying now. Okay. Oh, and I uh, almost forgot, a uh, space. I want to show you this, Tiberis log uh, F. So I'm going to follow all the logs here. And right now it says no logs are found because I haven't actually done apply yet, but it's going to actually detect all the logs and add it, right? So here it calculated the dependencies and you see batch one is going to apply all the leaf nodes. So I'm going to click yes, enter. Okay, so now it's applying the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, we can kind of nice summarize output there. On the right-hand side, we're just telling all the logs and streaming out all the output. It's releasing everything. Okay, so you kind of, uh, you can do both essentially, okay? So it finished batch one right there. So it finished all the leaf nodes and then this now is gonna go up the graph and it's gonna go, uh, you know, to the left next batch or the next layer, I guess, the next level. Let's go batch three. And then uh, I think there were, let me scroll up here. There are five batches in total. So we're in batch three right now. This is doing A2 right here and C2 right here, okay? So it's kind of kind of going up and it hasn't started these other nodes yet because um, it needs to uh, meet all the dependencies first. And then finally batch five. So that's running the last one. So this should run essentially A1 right here, the, the highest one. There we go. There's, a, there's A1 and then you can see that kind of uh, the resources on the right hand side or the logs on the right hand side. 
Okay, so that kind of applied to everything. Let's just uh, show you also, I'm just gonna target kind of B1 only here, okay? So I'm gonna target B1 and apply that. So what we expect is uh, essentially the mm, diagram on the left-hand side here, B1 and C1. So and you can see that. C1 is gonna be applied first and then B1 is gonna be applied right afterwards. So let's uh, watch that kind of happen. So I did C1 first and now it's gonna go up and it's not very far up, but it goes uh, B1 and then it's gonna stop there, okay? So we did that and now let's just kind of complete everything by going down, okay? Tear space all down. So this is the opposite where it's gonna destroy everything. Okay, so uh, it's calculating the dependencies right now, and now it's gonna destroy everything in reverse order. Okay, so he, you can see batch one's kind of A1 first, so it starts here first and it kind of goes all the way down, and then eventually it's gonna destroy everything. Okay, it just does uh, what we did with up, except it does in reverse order. So that's what's happening right now. It's going to like the batch two, and it's gonna go batch three and destroy more resources. It's nice. It shows us a nice summarized output right here. It's just showing us what's been destroyed. And then again, if you want to see kind of all the logs, <laughs> then you could just uh, use TerraSpace uh, log dash F there. If you want to tail it essentially. Okay. Um, and batch four now. So we're getting there. We're almost uh, done. And that's destroying three. And then finally, the last one is going to destroy finally in reverse order now A1 and A A3, and then we're done. Okay. Oh, oh, and see, it's, oh, a bunch of these other ones too. Hmm. Oh, I guess. Okay. So, okay. So it's done. It deployed everything. Uh, or it's not done yet, but it's going to be finished. A minute and six seconds there. So it's going to destroy everything and kind of goes up the tree and kind of, it, it, it waited to destroy all those other ones because the dependencies need to be me. Okay. So that's good. Um, so uh, that covers the demo. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go back to this. Uh, and one more thing I want to show you was this. It's basically uh, just running the up commands individually. So let's actually go back uh, and let's go up C1. So what I'm kind of saying is we could deploy basically the entire infrastructure. We could deploy subgraphs or we could drop down to the up command. And we just drop down the up command. We're actually just aiming one node, right? So I'm just basically deploying C1 first, right? I'm just kind of deploying manually, then B1. And I want to use dash Y this time to just bypass the prompt. And it's gonna now uh, do a plan and then it's gonna apply that plan onto a B1. So here we go. And there, so we only apply a C1 and B1. So what you can do is there's kind of a lot of versatility there. You could deploy all your infrastructure. You could deploy subgraphs if you want to and target that, or you could drop down and deploy individual stacks uh, or nodes here. So you have a lot of kind of um, flexibility and kind of control over what you want to deploy. Okay, um, that covers it. Uh, that basically shows you a demo, introduces you to TerraSpace all and everything. Uh, hopefully, you found that video helpful. If you found videos like this helpful, give it a thumbs up. It encourages me to create content like this. Uh, if you like this uh, TerraSpace uh, project, the Terraform framework here, uh, go to GitHub and give it a star. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, anyway, uh, cheers and have a great day.